minutes of an opening statement. I thank the chair and uh, just echo Mr. Cardenas's thanks to all of our constituents for making the trip to be part of this uh, this field hearing. It is very a very important hearing, and it is appropriate that we are doing it here in the Rio Grande Valley. So I'm no stranger to issues regarding border security, no stranger to problems surrounding the immigration difficulties and fentanyl. In addition to being a Texan, I practiced medicine for three decades before coming to Congress to work on these issues. The Office of Refugee Resettlement that uh, uh, Mr. Griffith uh, addressed is part of our subcommittee's jurisdiction and it is appropriate that we be here on the ground to see firsthand. And I will just share with you, it is work done by the O&I committee in previous Congresses that has actually made the Office of Refugee Resettlement stronger than what it was in 2014 when we were faced with a similar crisis with unaccompanied children coming across our border. Um, all of us have worked on legislation to combat the misuse of opioids and to ensure the safety of unaccompanied children at the border. <clears throat> this past year, the Office of National Drug Control Policy released their annual report to Congress regarding high intensity drug trafficking areas. Of 33 of these areas, the three located in Texas, Houston, South Texas, and West Texas, reported large disruptions of drug trafficking organizations as well as seizures. All of the Texas-based uh, high-intensity drug areas, the drugs seized were, over, were worth over a combined $100 million. In addition, Customs and Border Protection reported approximately 7.8 thousand pounds of drug seizures in October of fiscal year 2023 and 9,000 pounds of drug seizures in November of fiscal year 2023. I mean, that's a lot of drugs. Just this past week, the Dallas Morning News reported that three teens tragically passed away from fentanyl-laced pills. Six other teens were hospitalized from exposure to the substance in the city of Carrollton, Texas, in uh, uh, just next to the district that I represent. These nine Texas students were all younger than 17 years of age. After the story broke and parents sat waiting to be notified as local authorities began to take action, but to all of us, this is unacceptable. It goes without saying that the problem has infiltrated our schools to the point where distribution of these substances happens unsupervised and oftentimes on social media apps. While our number one priority should be securing our border to protect the unchecked distribution of fentanyl, we must already accept the problem that is already here. The way in which we treat patients exposed to opioids and addicted to opioids has drastically evolved in the past decade. The scourge of fentanyl in our community is a completely different disease from what it was even five years ago. The last time the committee worked on the Support Act, which was signed into law in 2018, our focus was correctly on opioids and opiate addiction. But since then, the landscape has changed drastically to include patients dying from only three milligrams of fentanyl. Basically, we're talking about a pencil tip. Patients exposed to the high potency substance often suffer from other addictions and have severe mental and behavioral health problems. And I appreciate Mr. Cardenas sharing his story with us as, as he knows these patients and treating these patients can be complex clinical situations. Our committee, our focus should remain on examining federal laws that prevent patient access, access to care. And one of those is the IMD exclusion, the Institute for Mental Disease exclusion, which we addressed in the reconciliation bill. Unfortunately, it wasn't a, an amendment was, was not allowed to go forward, but this prohibits Medicaid payments to residential mental health facilities with more than 16 beds. We actually can improve our track record by addressing that deficiency. We should focus on bolstering our workforce and supporting our providers to ensure that mental health and substance use patients have access to personalized care and medicine. So our border is important. Our border agents deserve our respect and I hope that with this hearing today, we can convey some of that respect 
And Mr. Chairman, I'll yield back to you. Thank you, gentlemen, for yielding back. Now recognize Mr. Vesey for five minutes for an opening statement. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. And uh, I think all